At their closest point, Alaska and Russia are only 55 miles apart. On a clear day, you can stand on the coast of one and see the other across the Bering Strait. In the middle, two islands, Big Diomede and Little Diomede, sit just 3.8 kilometers apart, one belonging to Russia and the other to the United States. It seems like the perfect spot for a bridge linking two superpowers, a crossing that could connect Asia and North America, but no bridge exists. And no is even under construction. So why has humanity never built a bridge between Alaska and Russia? The idea of linking Alaska and Siberia is nothing new. As early as the 19th century, visionaries imagined it as the missing link in a global road and rail system. If you could cross the Bering Strait, you could theoretically drive from New York to London, from Tokyo to Toronto, or from Beijing to Mexico City. The narrowness of the gap makes it tempting. The Hong Kong Bridge spans 55 kilometers, almost the same distance as the Bering Strait, and China's bridge is 164 kilometers long. By comparison, 85 kilometers of bridges, tunnels, and causeways could connect the two continents, while on paper it looks possible. In reality, the Bering Strait hides a collection of obstacles, both natural, political, and economic, that turn a short gap on the map into one of the most unbridgeable places on Earth. But the first problem isn't distance, it's what moves through the water. The the Bering Strait freezes for most of the year. From late autumn until early summer, drifting sheets of sea ice fill the waters. Some flows stretch for kilometers, driven by winds and current speeds that crush anything in their way. The ice is thick enough to destroy piers, pillars, or even oil rigs. Unlike warmer seas where bridges stand on stable supports, any structure in the strait would face constant battering. Engineers would have to design supports capable of withstanding hundreds of thousands of tons of moving ice each and every winter. No existing long-span bridge in the world faces these conditions. The nearest comparison is the Mackinac Bridge in Michigan, but even there, ice cover is thinner and less mobile. The Bering Strait is another scale entirely. But even if the ice could be tamed, the land that it rests on creates its own problems. Both Alaska and the Russian region across the strait sit on permafrost ground that remains frozen year-round. Permafrost is solid when frozen, but unstable when thawed. As the climate warms, thawing permafrost causes roads, pipelines, and buildings to buckle. Anchoring a bridge across thousands of meters of frozen shoreline would require constant stabilization. Heavy pylons could sink unevenly, cracking the structure. Maintenance would be a never-ending battle. Engineers already struggle with small-scale projects in permafrost regions. Multiplying that problem for the world's longest sea bridge would push current technology to its limits. And under the ground, another danger awaits. Alaska is one of the most seismically active places on Earth. The 1964 Great Alaska Earthquake reached 9.2 magnitude, the second most powerful earthquake ever recorded. The Russian Far East is also shaken by frequent tremors. A Bering Strait bridge would have to survive earthquakes, tsunamis, and shifting tectonic plates. Bridges in Japan and California are designed for seismic zones, but never at this scale. The combination of ice, permafrost, and earthquakes makes the strait one of the most harsh possible sites for engineering. And then there's the weather above the ground. The Bering Strait is infamous for brutal weather. Winds howl at hurricane strength, blizzards sweep across the sea, and the waves reach up to 10 meters. For most of the year, visibility drops to almost nothing. Construction crews would face impossible conditions, while maintenance teams would risk their lives to keep the bridge open. Unlike the English Channel, the Bering Strait is not a busy corridor filled with ferries and ports. It's wilderness, remote, and inhospitable. Building here would mean constant battles with storms that stop work for up to months at a time. But let's imagine engineers somehow managed to build it. What would it connect to? The Channel Tunnel links London and Paris, and ties into dense road and rail systems serving millions of people. The Bering Strait is different though. On the American side, there are no highways that lead to the strait. Nome, the nearest town, has fewer than 4,000 people and no road connecting it to the rest of Alaska. On the Russian side, it's even more remote, with fewer than 50,000 residents across a region the size of Texas. The capital lies hundreds of kilometers from the coast, and there are no major rail or road lines. A bridge here would never connect two cities. It would connect two frozen frontiers with no infrastructure to carry traffic any further. Building the bridge would only be the beginning. Thousands of kilometers of new roads and rail would be required. And the price of building all of that would be staggering. The Channel Tunnel costs over 9 billion pounds.
pounds in 1994 for only 50 kilometers. The Hong Kong Bridge cost over 20 billion for 55 kilometers. A Bering Strait Bridge would be at least 85 kilometers long with unprecedented engineering challenges. Estimates range from 100 billion to over 1 trillion dollars, and when you add in the cost of building rail lines across Siberia and Alaska, the figure could easily double. And for what return? Ships already carry goods between Asia and North America cheaply. Planes connect Tokyo to Los Angeles in under 10 hours. A bridge would be slower, more risky, and much more expensive than existing routes. And even if money were no object, politics adds another wall of ice. During the Cold War, the Bering Strait was called the Ice Curtain. The Diomede Islands symbolize the divide. Big Diomede on the Russian side housed a Soviet military base, while Little Diomede on the U.S. side remained a small Alaskan village. At its closest point, the U.S. and the USSR were separated by less than four kilometers, but politically, they were worlds apart. Even today, the tension remains. The U.S. and Russia are strategic rivals. Sanctions, military competition, and mutual distrust make cooperation on infrastructure nearly impossible. Building a bridge would require not only money and engineering, but an unprecedented political alliance. Yet for all of these obstacles, the dream refuses to die. In 1890, American engineer William Gilpin proposed a cosmopolitan railway that would link continents through the Bering Strait. In 1905, Tsar Nicholas II's government considered a telegraph and rail link. In the 20th century, Joseph Strauss, later the chief engineer of the Golden Gate Bridge, drew up plans for the Bering Strait crossing. And during the Cold War, scientists speculated about tunnels beneath the ice. In 2007, officials in Russia floated a $65 billion plan for a 100-kilometer long tunnel carrying trains and pipelines beneath the strait, and it was announced with fanfare, but soon faded. Since then, no serious funding or political agreement has ever been reached. But what if, against all odds, it actually happened? A bridge across the Bering Strait would physically connect every continent except Antarctica. A driver could, in theory, travel from South Africa to London, across Europe to Siberia, and into North America. Global trade routes would shift. Energy pipelines could cross continents. Rail corridors would connect Beijing to New York. But this vision remains theoretical. Without demand, infrastructure, or political will, the bridge would stand as a monument to ambition, not practicality. The world already has efficient air and sea links, and a bridge here would be an engineering marvel, but an economic disaster. So why is there no bridge between Alaska and Russia? The answer is written in ice, money, and history. The Bering Strait may look small on the map, but it holds some of the biggest barriers in the world. Sea ice crushes any structure that dares to stand in its path. Permafrost and earthquakes undermine the land. Storms hammer the surface. On both sides, there are no highways or railways to connect to. The cost would reach in the trillions with little demand to justify it. And above all else, politics between Russia and the United States freeze the project before it begins. The Diomede Islands may sit only a few kilometers apart, but they remain a world away. Until technology leaps forward, economic shift and politics thaw, there'll be no bridge between Alaska and Russia. The world is full of mysteries, and we're here to crack them. Thanks for watching World Cracked. Make sure you subscribe and share this with a friend. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.